In 1969, a group of astronauts changed the world. They walked on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In 1972, our journey ended. We've never been back. 2010 begins a year of change. Private companies are working on next generation spaceships. Governments are looking to go back to the moon and on to Mars. It's time to look up and dream again. It's time to push humans into the cosmos. It's time to educate and engage the planet. It's time for Space Vidcast. Welcome to Space Vidcast 332, I think it is, for Friday, September 24th, aught 10. Aught 10? Two aught 10. Two aught? My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as usual, is the beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented, and scooching this way, Carrie Ann. We are your Space Vidcasters, and we've got an action-packed episode for you tonight. We've got, this is pretty much the new space show. Tonight. Did, yes. you, did you see the rundown? Yes. I was actually uh, trying to call it up. Uh, now I'm going to just make new sure. New space. <laughs> yeah, no Is kidding. Is that better? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a ton of new space news. It's it's pretty cool stuff that's happening. Uh, and then we got a little bit of old space, a little bit of new, a little bit of old. Do we have something All blue? <laughs> no. That's funny, though. Damn it. <laughs> um, uh, a couple of things. Uh, you know, I just wanted to thank Crow River Coffee for sponsoring us as they do week after week. And, you know, we don't mention them enough in the show. They are the awesome creators of Blast Off Blend Coffee. Look at that. It almost looks like the gold foil stuff you saw on the lunar module, the LEM. And uh, you can get Blast Off Blend by going to CrowRiverCoffee.com. It is awesome space geek coffee. And coming soon... At your request, T minus zero, which will be a special blend of tea for space geeks. Uh, certainly go grab some coffee. It helps them help us, as it were. So uh, awesome sponsors of the show, Crow River Coffee. And um, should we get started straight into some space news here? Might as well. All right. Space news. Space news. Yes. Yes. I love it. All right. Uh, starting off the news, Boeing and Space Adventures have teamed up. And what are they teaming up for? Well, they're going to be building a pretty awesome crew transportation. This looks amazing. You know, well, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a rehash of what Boeing was working on for NASA. Check out this video. Right. Um, it's it's uh, the crew transportation, I'm sorry, crew space transportation, or CST. 100. So uh, this is the Boeing CST-100, and it's designed to mount on top of just about any rocket, right? Well, not just about any rocket. That wouldn't work. Um, right. easy, but certainly uh, more than a rocket. You Anything could, you got. You, <laughs> literally to be one. You know, those little homemade rockets? No. But uh, it's a seven-person crew module, and they're teaming up with Space Adventures so that they'll be hoping to be able to do manned missions uh, by 2015. And they're going to be able to go to the International Space Station, and this is what I love, or future... Uh, low LEO Earth, stations. Low Earth object stations. And when you look at these stations, it's obviously Bigelow. And then they were like, yes. you know, they, they made these Bigelow animations. And clearly they were like, you know, let's not even try to hide it. And if you look on the side, it says you clear as day, Bigelow. Bigelow. <laughs> <laughs> but cool, right? So now we're retaking some of that Orion technology and turning it into something that mere mortals may be able to actually use. Something I think that's... Think useful? Pretty, something interesting? Well, no, I mean, it, it's, I don't want to say it's the same thing, but it's, um, it's pretty awesome, right? I mean, yeah. we'll be able to, instead of just killing the program dead, we can reuse it in a commercial way, and right. here you go. Now you've got something that can go to the International Space Station, or it can go to a, you know, a Bigelow. And keep in mind, this is, this is one of the problems Bigelow has right now. Mm -hmm. How do they get people to their space stations? Right. It, they, there's really, there's SpaceX, I mean, just from a purely non-governmental standpoint, there's SpaceX, 
Okay, well that completes my list. There you go. And, All right. You know, and they haven't even, and we'll talk about SpaceX a little bit later on in the, uh, in the show. If I may, but. really quickly before this animation ends, uh, if you noticed when it was docked with the Bigelow station, uh, or uh, right station, that's what we're calling it. Uh, there were two modules. There was one that was, had it was already docked underneath, yeah. and then this other one was docking. I love the flat parachutes. I know they're like two D animation. Right. <laughs> uh, oh. Two and a half D. Two D. You know what the damn thing space. is? Why bother? Yes. Um. Anyway, but yeah, there was two of them, and each they each hold uh, seven. So that would be fourteen people on that, or potentially fourteen people on that station. I believe no. What do you mean, no? No, that's a crew escape vehicle, most likely. Oh. Yep, so you could only have seven at any time. You have to have another module attached so that the crew can get off in case of an emergency and there's not another docked unit. Much like the International Space Station has emergency capsules on it right now. Right, so but why wouldn't you just take the vehicle you left on? You, 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 you would when you leave, but you wouldn't be able to, uh, you know, who knows. Okay, anyway. Uh, so Possible. What you have to have at least Same. one... Okay, sure. <laughs> you can have as many ports as you wanted on the uh, on the thing, right? All right. Uh, so that's a pretty cool thing, but Space Adventures doesn't stop there. They keep teaming up. Now, this is actually an older announcement, but being that we did the Boeing Space Adventures announcement here, I don't remember right. if we brought this up in the show Probably earlier, so I figured we'd bring it up now, which is Armadillo Aerospace, uh, run by John Carmack of um, um, Doom fame, uh, id Software, uh, is teaming up with Space Adventures, and they're going to try to undercut Virgin Galactic by almost a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, they're going to be doing suborbital tickets to space for a hundred and two thousand dollars. That's going up a hundred kilometers. That's their plan, at least. That's huge, at least that's though. what's in the uh, that's what's in the announcement. Now, keep in mind, this announcement was back in April of 2010, so this isn't a new announcement. But I thought, right. you know, Space Adventure seems to be on a roll here. This whole commercial space thing seems to be kind of taken off. We've got Boeing doing their thing. Now we got Space Adventures kind of doing... Or, Space Adventures uh, a Diamandis production? I believe Space Adventures started off as a Diamandis production, but I don't remember. Hey, chat room, help me out. Is Space Adventures... No longer a, a Diamandis production? I thought it was a Diamandis production, but it may not be anymore, or at least Diamandis is somehow... You know, maybe a co-producer. He gave his blessing. G gave, all right. So, all right. So, there you go. Space sorry. Adventure, a I'm sorry. Anyway, yes. A Diamandis production. Speaking of Armadillo Aerospace, is that where we're going? Absolutely. You like how this works? I do. Speak did, you, did you like the flow of the, uh, the outline? I put a little bit of good. thought into this particular that was flow. Good. Speaking of Armadillo Aerospace, we're segueing. <laughs> Uh, they have uh, done some test flights to Supermod. So this first video, and we're not going to even try to talk over this because trying to talk over a rocket is probably the dumbest thing you could ever do. But We did the, learn that once. The first video is a te uh, tethered flight from Armadillo's Supermod. So here you go. Check this out. I heard it go boom. I can delay a little bit longer. <laughs> So there you go. That was the tethered flight of the super mod, which was, you know, which was cool. Except that's tethered, and didn't the legs seem kind of stumpy? I mean, do you really think it's going to be able to land on that? Yeah, it looked really kind of weird. Didn't yeah. It? So here's the untethered flight of that same vehicle. As it's coming in for landing, watch the legs. It's pretty cool.
dude, that thing is right out of sci-fi. Isn't it? it first it's off, so retro. Like, if that footage was black and white, you would think it was, like, oh, from yeah. the 50s and 60s. Well, it, it, you would almost think it was, like, a fake television thing because you got the little lights yeah. go, boop, 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 coming up. That is probably <laughs> the coolest thing it. I've seen any of these little new space companies, little new space companies, <laughs> these new space little. companies make. It just looks awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it kind of has that cool retro look to it. it uh, someone asked how far up it went. It ran uh, 2,247 feet was its apogee. Uh, so it, it went pretty, I mean, you it saw went it, far. it went up there, uh, and then it came down, and, and then I like how it kind of bounces when it lands. Just boom, you know somebody's going to take boom. that footage and be like, UFOs, UFOs, they're everywhere. <laughs> so I, we thought that was really cool looking. Very cool. All right, so that's, that's what's going on with uh, our, oh, hey, can you, so we've got a new video, so speaking of new space, and yes. speaking of Armadillo undercutting Virgin Galactic, and speaking of Virgin mm. Galactic, uh, they have got a new video out. Uh, no, actually, no, let me clarify. I scatterbrained here. Let me clarify. I realize that Armadillo is saying that they're going to undercut Virgin Galactic, right. but neither company is flying right now. Right. You cannot, I mean, you can buy a ticket on Virgin Galactic, but you can't fly to space. You can buy, uh, you might be able to buy a ticket on Armadillo. I'm not sure if you can actually buy tickets yet. I'm sure they'll take Regardless, your money. Regardless, you cannot fly to space. So it's kind of all moot until they're actually flying to space. I'm going right? to undercut both of them. Two bucks. Let's go. Yeah. When are you flying to space? <laughs> Someday, Tomorrow. I don't know. Someday, exactly. So, um, now, not to say that they won't fly to space, you know, Virgin Galactic is certainly right. pretty far along uh, in the process, but it won't be this year, probably won't be next year, right. so we're looking at 2012, um, and possibly even a little bit later for Armadillo. Can they outrun tornadoes? What? Like the movie. What? What? 2012. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, sorry. In Go. the movie, I don't remember a rocket outrunning a tornado. Not, it wasn't a rocket, it, it was, was an, an airplane. airplane. Uh, maybe. Um, so, but if you stall for a minute, I can get that new Virgin Galactic video. Okay. But you have to stall. Apparently I need to stall, thanks for that. Uh, for those of you who have seen the earlier Virgin Galactic videos, it's very much so like that, a slightly longer version, um, with, but with added, obviously with added uh, footage and whatnot. And it is kind of inspirational, even if it's not something that you very particularly are looking forward to or wanting to do. Maybe you want to go into space, but you're not really into the Virgin Galactic way of doing it. Um, it still uh, creates a sense of wonder again, which I think is very, very cool. And uh, they are rehashing some of their old footage uh, in this video. So that's kind of a bummer because for part of it, you're like, yeah, mm -hmm, okay, cool, seen it, done it, thanks. Uh, but then they do talk to some other people. And, and now I'm going to let the I community, think it's cute. by the way, uh, I'm going to let the community decide right now whether we want to watch it or not because this is a nine minute video. And uh, I don't I really. It goes pretty quick. Uh, it does. It's a fun video. I think it feels but more like you a know, you can always watch a nine-minute video on YouTube on your own as well. Maybe not in the middle of the Space Vidcast show. Thank you, Porkchop. Uh, so you know, uh, you know, yeah, I can't cut it up for you guys right now. I, so either it's community gets to decide: do we watch the nine-minute video or not? Now, for those of you watching on YouTube on demand after the fact, this is why you watch live because you get to make these kind of decisions. The show is way more fun when you participate live. So link it, link it, no, um, it's five and a half minutes, no, I think it's nine minutes. Link it, okay, so we won't actually air the video in this particular show, but uh, it's out there. Play three minutes, pause, and ask again. Not so much, but thanks for that. No. No. <laughs> so, okay, so in case you want to see it, I mean, that's, that's kind of what it is. Uh, I, again, I, I, if you haven't seen any of the Virgin Galactic videos, I think it's very well done. Um, it's not too preachy, which I was a little worried at with nine minutes, uh, and it doesn't go the full nine minutes. I think it actually goes closer to like eight minutes because there's a little bit of buffer on the front end, and there's a little bit of, yeah, but there's, there's like a, two, a minute and a half worth of credits at the very end no, that you don't need to watch. Anyway, but point being that um, if you'd like to watch it, obviously, we'll link it. It'll be there for you. Uh, you can see it. It is good. It's worth your nine minutes. I would definitely recommend, if you're a space geek, Watch this video. Watch the uh, watch the Virgin Galactic video. And speaking of Virgin Galactic, there's no segue for this next one. Uh, no. Can, can you make one? Uh, f speaking of Virgin, no. and other new space. No, I no. There's really there's nothing. So uh, you know, let's do it this order then. STS-133 with Space Shuttle Discovery. This is the actually actually watching um, the mating right here of Space Shuttle Discovery to its I feel like uh, in the way. Right, right there. Right, right there. Right there. And that video right there. Um, 
So Space Shuttle Discovery is rolling, uh, rolled out to the pad, I believe, or, and or about to roll out to the pad. I apologize. I don't... I don't uh, Virgin mating, indeed. Rolled out! Uh, and this is the final flight of Space Shuttle Discovery. Uh, this was the final uh, rollover, final rollout, and now the final flight of OV-103. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I don't want to say it's, it's bittersweet, right? Because it's time for the Space Shuttle program to end. I, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of great people who work in the program. It's a fantastic vehicle, but it's time to move on. It's time to move beyond low Earth orbit. And um, I don't really want to see, I, I, I grew up with the space shuttle. I right. know you did too, so it's kind of hard to see the space shuttle end. But it's kind of cool to see where some of this other, like earlier in the show, the Boeing taking the Orion capsule and turning it into... Our future's very bright. Yeah, it's, it's pretty so. cool. So it's, it's going to be... It's going to be awesome to see what comes out of NASA, and, and we'll talk about some of their next-gen stuff uh, in a moment. But uh, So STS-133 slated for the very beginning of November. Mm -hmm. That brings us to SpaceX, who at the end of October was going to perform Falcon 9 Flight 2, mm -hmm. which is with their Dragon uh, test of their Dragon capsule. However, that date has slipped, as, by the way, m many dates in, for, if you're not a rocket geek, you may not, you might be like, oh my gosh, they missed their date. Happens all the, ooh, look at that. You got the picture. Isn't that an amazing picture of Elon Musk? He just looks amazing. Even I'm like, wow. This is the latest Wired. Um, and really, uh, the article is talking about Tesla motors and whatnot. But if you happen to be an Elon fan. That is an amazing picture of Elon Musk. It's not He's Amazing. beautiful in this picture, and I'm not that big of a fan. But the Falcon 9 Flight 2 test with Dragon has pushed back to no earlier than November 8th. Um, they've asked for the range for the 8th and the 9th of mm -hmm. November. And um, this is going to be a really cool flight because it's not just testing the Falcon 9. And they made some minor hardware tweaks. If you remember watching Falcon 1, uh, Falcon 1, Falcon 9 Flight 1. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. they have the Falcon 1, Falcon 9 Flight 1. Uh, when I Different. launched it off the pad, it did this weird, like, spiral turny thing. Right. Uh, and then when you saw it get into the upper stage, get into space, you saw this just abnormal um, roll. It was mm -hmm. just rolling quite a bit. I mean, it was still within the what they wanted, but it was just, right. it was more roll than you'd want. So apparently they've made some hardware changes, hopefully to fix some of that stuff, and apparently some software tweaks as well. So they're going to be testing not only those changes to Falcon 9, but also now testing the Dragon, well, I, I call it the Dragon crew capsule, although it's not been man rated yet. So it's, it's just the Dragon transport uh, capsule, where right, it's going to be transporting point. goods to the International Space Station. Um, so that's going to be a, a fun test. They have to orbit the Earth at least four times. Mm -hmm. They have to test, hang on, I got my cheat sheet here. They have to trans, uh, transmit telemetry to the vehicle. Mm -hmm. They have to maneuver, re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, do a mm -hmm. safe water landing and recovery. Yes. Um, and that's all the stuff that they have to do on this Dragon uh, test for Falcon, for Falcon 9 Flight 2. Now again scheduled for November 8th night. So November is looking to be a really action-packed month right there in the first couple of weeks. Boom, STS-133, last flight of Discovery. Boom, first flight of Dragon, November 8th, 9th. Just mm -hmm. boom, boom, right back to back. It's gonna, yep. be, it's gonna be pretty epic. I'm excited. It should be very interesting. You know, actually, there's a lot of stuff going on in October, I feel like, as well. Yes. There's the space, this isn't in our script, so I, uh, I'm just gonna, but what is it? The Space Vision, the SEDS Space Vision Conference? That's in November. Oh, that's in November. So what's going on? That's in actually right between 133 and the Falcon. All right, so let me get this straight. We've got a shuttle launching. Yes. And then we've got the Space Vision Conference. Yes. And then right after that, we've got uh, the Falcon 9 Flight 2. Yep. So like, <laughs> that's pretty. In the first two weeks. <laughs> and that was. A and great then time. everyone takes a vacation because it's. You gotta breathe. Oh my gosh. So what's happening in October? Is there nothing going on? In um. Well, you're doing the Vegas. Thing. And then there was the oh. other thing that got rescheduled that we're not doing. Oh, that's right. Actually, there was a lot of stuff in October, and now it's all moved to November. That's what happened. Yes. That's why I feel like October is busy. So there you go. By the way, I'm going to be going to Blog World. If any one of you are going to Blog World and want to meet up, Blog World Las Vegas. Um, and they want me to stay in Florida for both STS and SpaceX, but can't. probably can't do that. Sorry. Not till we move there. And speaking of well, NASA and Long... Oh, Pete's ahead. birthday is in October, so yeah, yeah. that's all you need to know. The STS-135 crew has also been named. I just keep going boom, 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 right into yeah, the stuff. Yeah, you do. Right, yeah, just whipping right along. STS-135 crew has been named. We've got Commander Christopher Ferguson. By the way, um, STS-135 is as official as you can get without actually being official. Yes. 
How's that? So we don't actually have an STS-135 yet. And for those who don't know, and if you're watching this show, you're probably a space geek, and you probably already know this, but I'll rehash it anyhow. STS-335, or uh, I'm sorry, Launch on Need 335 will mm -hmm. be with Space Shuttle Discovery. Yes. Um, probably mm -hmm. the, the, what I would consider the best orbiter of the fleet, and uh, certainly NASA's favorite as well. It's, it's the workhorse of the fleet and, um, no, Atlantis. Well, I did I really? Freudian slip. They're gonna they're gonna eat me alive on that one. Uh, so Atlantis, uh, workhorse of the fleet, and uh, yeah, yeah, and I'm uh, just gonna have to stop there. So uh, they're gonna be using Atlantis as the launch on need vehicle, which is the emergency shuttle on standby for STS-134. Yes. Now, assuming they don't need to use it, which I think is a pretty safe assumption, they haven't really needed to use it uh, since the inception of the launch on need program. Uh, they're hoping to convert that to STS-135, yes. which will be the final flight of the space shuttle, space transportation system completely. Um, and that is slated for, is it June or July of 2011? I thought it was June. Chat room, help me out. I don't remember if it's June or July. I know I it's one it of the Js. the very, very end of June. Like the 28th, right after our wedding anniversary. Mm. June, I think. And it, come on. You can hit Wikipedia, guys. I'm trying to host your show. Near positive. STS 135. If it goes, it's supposed to be June 28th. I've got June me. and July from the chat room. Thanks a lot, really? guys. Really? You guys. Wow. Wow. All right. So uh, somewhere in the June-July time frame is the hoping that we'll, we'll actually launch STS 135. Now, again, right now it's... S Net June 28th, 2011. There we go. No earlier than June 28th. So right now, it's still launch on need 335. It is not STS-135. But all signs are pointing towards this turning into... <laughs> Do you have a Ouija board? <laughs> sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. All signs Little point to Little magic eight ball? Yes. <laughs> Outlook looks good. <laughs> uh, so it looks like we're going to have a 135. And uh, that's with Space Shuttle Atlantis. And the crew for that, as I started talking about, yes. is going to be Commander Christopher Ferguson, Pilot Douglas... Douglas Hurley, yes. and then we've got Mission Specialist Rex Whalem. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing these right. I'm terrible with names. And then Mission Se Specialist Sandra Magnus. And you'll notice that's only a crew of four. I love Sandy. Yeah? You're yeah. so excited? Yeah. It's like uh, Peggy. Yes. Yeah. Much like Peggy, uh, but different. But different. Uh, so crew of four for the final mission on the best space shuttle, space shuttle Atlantis. Go women. Okay. What? Oh, hey, speaking of Go Women, yes. if you guys missed it, we did an all-women uh, podcast. Yeah, we had an unmanned podcast. The unmanned podcast, which I <laughs> wish we had thought of during the show. That would have been epic. No, the unmanned podcast. We've got a new podcast series we've started on Space Vidcast. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we haven't quite figured out what to call it yet. And it doesn't quite work because it doesn't work with the Vidcast title because it's an audio-only podcast. But it's a roundtable discussion with yes. industry experts. We try to bring in some high-end industry experts. So, you know, these are big names that you know in the industry talking about, you know, news. If you watch This Week in Tech at all, it's kind of like that, but for space. Mm -hmm. And so we've had a couple of these now. Mm -hmm. And the second one was an unmanned podcast. It was an unmanned podcast. Hosted by yourself. And if you want to hear that, you can uh, go to spacefitcast.com, scroll down to the podcast section, and bam play it right there. And we want to have an unmanned podcast about once a month. That's a hope. And we do those every Sunday night if you'd like to join in and listen to you that. You can join us live, or they are, of course, archived on spacefitcast.com. You know, finally, we spoke of, earlier in the show, we spoke of, you know, some what's going to come out of Constellation going away essentially and the space shuttle program and where's NASA going to go from here right and my personal opinion and I should personal opinion is that NASA should be an agency that looks to pushing the envelope mm -hmm. they're doing the they're doing the just way out there stuff and it sounds like they're kind of working on that the rail launch scramjets uh, or similar just next gen launch technologies which is basically um, mag levying vehicle. And this is just a bunch of people talking. This isn't anything real yet. But they've got some interesting ideas. But they ideas. are talking, and I think that's kind of the point in I, my mind. And actually, you can find this. This is an article on space.com. I'm going to pop it into the uh, chat room so you guys can read that. Uh, it's a fa and it's right down there in the chat room, and we'll add it in the show notes if I remember. But it is a fascinating article talking about, you know, let's find next gen ways of launching. Let's use a mothership, launch it as a scramjet mm -hmm. up to really high altitudes, and then launch off this scramjet mm -hmm. ship. 
Let's use maglev systems to mag like railgun a vehicle up and then launch off of that. Because they figure once the launch pads are, are gone, they've got enough room to build it right up there in KSC. Yeah, now, they've, as I mentioned in the chat room, they've been talking about these launch vehicles for a long time, right? Yes. But now we're at a point, right? You couldn't, no one was going to take any of this stuff seriously when we had STS there because all of our resources were going into STS. Right. The space Transportation System, the Space Shuttle. But now that STS is going away and Constellation has kind of gone away and uh, Charlie Bolden, the current administrator of NASA, has basically said we need to find these next-gen technologies. We need to concentrate on these things. Do it now. Maybe they're going to take it a little bit more seriously. Now, again, all talk, but fascinating article. Right. And um, it, it's just it's a really kind of cool thing that I think they're working on down there. We'll see what, you know, maybe nothing will come of it, but at least they're talking and getting that conversation open, and they're not all like, meh, they cancel my program. Which is how bad would be. Yeah, it would be. I'd be like, mm. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> They're clearly more grown up than I am. Yay. Yeah. And, uh, oh, uh, a couple other things. The reason this is on in the background is because we were going to watch the Soyuz landing right there. So that's that's live NASA TV. And then this is just this is just on a loop. But that's Space Shuttle Discovery right there. Oh, and other stuff that we're going to be coming out with. Um, <laughs> Oh no, I just, it's just a random show. Apparently. If you guys wanted it, this is why you watch live, because I'm watching the chat room, I'm listening to you guys. I mean, if you're watching this on demand, you're probably going, this sucks. <laughs> why, why can't I just have a new show? And I should point out, that's what the space pods are for, right? So we yes. give you daily five minute snip, snippets of kind of the space news that's been going on. Uh, but Space Foodcast, just so you guys know, is essentially uh, going off the air for the next week or so. We'll just continue to have our live videos, but you, uh, this. Uh, the next uh, unnamed podcast that we have this Sunday night will be the last thing you're going to see from us for about a week, week and a half, as I, my real life stuff that helps pay for Space Vidcast has taken over my schedule. So, and I, it pays for Space Vidcast. So, it comes first. He'll be out of the country. I won't be in the country. So, there will be no show next week. There will be no space pods next week. There will be no updates next week. The last thing you will see from us will be the space podcast, the unnamed space podcast. And that will be it for a week to a week and a half, depending upon how long all of this stuff takes. And then we're going to come back to you. What, what date will we be back? Um, it's October, isn't it? Yeah, I'm checking right now. Okay. So, I won't be here on the 30th. Right. It would be October 7th will be the first live show back. And then um, possibly doing the Thursday the 14th, or I'm sorry, it would be October 8th. Coordinated Universal Time. Sorry, my fault. So October 8th um, will be the first live show back and then possibly doing the October 15th show from Las Vegas. Maybe. I may sit that one out and drink instead. I'm not sure because I am going to be in Vegas. And if you guys like to join me, Blog World Expo right there Without in Vegas. Me. Without you. That's right. The boys are going to Vegas. It's going to be awesome. That's our show this week. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And remember, Crow River Coffee sponsors the show. Blast Off Blend, it's awesome. And it's one of those things that starts a conversation. Because there is a crow on the moon. On Literally, the moon. it is a crow on the moon with an uh, astronaut's helmet over its head. Yep. If that doesn't start a conversation He's about space. He's sitting on a coffee cup. I'm not sure what will. On the moon. All right. Thank you guys for so much for watching. <laughs> Stay with us if you're watching live. We'll enter post show, and we'll see you guys in two weeks. In 1979, it has changed. They walked, they walked, they walked, they walked. In 1979, our journey, 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 our journey